Hi everybody, this is Rose of Sharon, <clears throat> and I'm back again with another book review. I just recently read Unstuck, Out of Your Cave, Into Your Call, written by Pastor Mark Job, And this was actually a book that I heard about on Moody Radio, and having adored the story of Elijah, I just thought, I need to delve into this deeper. And the book is nothing but spectacular. It is absolutely phenomenal. And I found that I'm happy in everything, but I'm stuck on this one thing. And what I'm stuck in right now is just feeling like society has deemed that um, I have a problem due to the fact that I'm single. Well, it wasn't by choice. It was because the person that I was dating before cheated on me. I learned through the the woman who actually set us up and um, that broke my heart. So I've been I've been single for at least nine months now. Well almost nine months. And it just feels like there's a desperation there and there are times I come home and look at my table, there's nobody at my table because, of course, if you've watched my channel long enough, my parents are dead, but they're with God. And, yes, Dad will come around and he'll send me signs and I rarely, if ever, see Mom, but she'll come too, but Dad always comes around more often than not, and I'm glad he does because it, it does help, but the physical presence is the thing that I really, really miss, but over time, you just become more accepting to the fact that you're you're just going to have to be patient, and that's what what God has actually called me to be. And patience is not my strong suit. I mean, in certain aspects, yes, it is. Yes, I can wait in line if I know that's going to lead me to riding on a roller coaster, getting my groceries checked out. Yeah, I'm fine with this because I worked in retail for five years. So, yeah, I'm used to that. And there's nothing <clears throat> really grating about waiting in line. But this is entirely different. And I just, I was listening to the wrong voices of the macrocosm. And my microcosm, I had issue as well just because it's, the repetition of the devil saying, oh, well, look at you. You're so intelligent. You think you have it all, blah, 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 blah. And <clears throat> you think you're happy, but you're not. And, of course, I think, oh, Satan, shut up. But, you know, there's this, that constant gnawing. And it's, it's society, man. Mm, it's a real pain in the butt. But despite that, I've moved beyond this. And I'm working on myself. And I really didn't want to before, but I am working on myself. I've come very far in the duration of two years, uh, having lived on my own in an apartment. And how ha it hasn't always been easy. And the whole story is Elijah actually flees from Jezebel, as you probably well know. And uh, for good reason, because Jezebel wants him dead. And <clears throat> he finds himself in a cave, and he wishes death upon himself and God finds him out actually and of course the the famous line in scripture in Old Testament in in the book of Ezekiel uh, excuse me it's yeah not a book of Ezekiel but it's Elijah I forget which book it is that he's in but Ezekiel is um he has an encounter with God, and, and God often <clears throat> doesn't speak to us in, in loud, showy ways, but he speaks to us in a still, small voice, which is the crux of the whole scripture. But he has to return the way he came, and I thought, ooh, ooh, how many times have we come across that? And I'm even in a Bible study right now that I, I joined to get myself out of my comfort zone, and it's the best thing I've ever done. I think that this is a good step for me. Um, <clears throat> Hagar had to go back from when she came to Sarai and it doesn't say that she pondered about it all she just 
pivoted and returned to Sarai. And we don't really know what happened. I'm pretty sure that what occurred is, of course, there was a, a divide. There was a schism due to the fact that Isaac got the inheritance. And I always felt bad for Ishmael. But, yeah, sure, of course I would. But <laughs> Dad always did, too. And, and we're Christian, too, as well. So it's... Um, interesting but nevertheless there's always reconciliation and what comes out of unstuck itself is the fact that um god will speak in ways that we never thought possible and we thought and we'll think to ourselves well why am i going well it, well we're going through trials and i've been through this myself and periods of doubt we all go through this and don't don't feel bad because that's just part of the faith journey <clears throat> Sometimes that's meant to, to shake us out of our complacency and to remind us, hey, you got to put on your your big girl pants or your big boy pants, depending on your gender or what does you put on your pants one leg at a time. It doesn't matter what your gender is, but needless to say, pull up, your, pull yourself up by your bootstraps when you've had a fall, dust yourself off, carry on and <clears throat> You've been shaken to your core. Death can do that, especially. Trust me. You you learn people's loyalties really quickly. Yeah, been there, done that. But <clears throat> you become more aware of who you are, whose you are, and how resilient you can be. And personally, I think something like that really stirs us and makes us realize just how strong we are we are in our true capabilities and that's what God was teaching me through all this and he's teaching me that yes I can rely upon him yes he is a merciful God yes he's loving um I might be going through a trial right now and just overcoming this whole um idea of loneliness because it's just it's thrown in your face constantly and Society is to blame for that. I've mentioned that before, but I just have to take a deep breath and realize, you know what? God is with me. He's going to protect me. He's got a plan for me. Like Jeremiah 29 says, I've read it over and over again. It's a boomerang that continues to return to me when I need it most. And I heard it again when I was in Bible study. I thought, God, I know you're talking to me. Thank you. And of course, I got another verse today from a friend of mine. Those who reap in sorrow, or those who sow, actually those who sow in sorrow will reap with joy. And I thought, yes, this is also true. And it's a season and we all go through our seasons of life. And currently I feel like I'm coming out of a long drawn out winter into the first peak of spring actually. And it's nice. I thought I never thought the spring would come, but the spring did come. And I just realized that um, I'm becoming unstuck. I don't want to relapse. I want to continue going forward because I don't want to be like Lot's wife. Um, I'm progressing. Yes, it is a slow progression, but it is it's happening. And I do realize that all this is happening for my good. Uh, and God has my best interest at heart and he will answer my prayer. I just have to trust him and, and let him deal with it because this is something that I can't handle on my own. So um, Unstuck really talks about that. It talks about how God is with us in our difficulties even though we may at times feel like we can't reach him. But sometimes it's us we, we sometimes put ourselves in our own caves <laughs> and job speaks of that too and i thought hey, ouch that hit the nail on the head because i feel like oftentimes i'm very very difficult to myself not to other people i'm fine with other people says i'm so hard on myself because i want with what, what other people have and sometimes it's just better to realize you can be happy or actually not really happy but contented and I am content I am pleased with where I've where I've come from where I'm going and I'm living in the now rather than 
being overwhelmed with, oh my God, what's going to happen? This God is in control. So I realized that and unstuck has helped me come to that conclusion. Thank God that I finally figured this out in 39 years. But yeah, I'm a late bloomer. What do I, what can I say? But beyond that, I think unstuck should be read by everybody. If, if you feel like, oh, God's angry with me and this is why this has happened. Job speaks upon that, and it's it's a hard truth. This is a very difficult truth. It's, it's one of those things, just like with uh, what we're learning in um, church right now about suffering. It, that is a very tough pill to swallow. But despite all that, we do serve a very merciful, forgiving, loving, just God. And praise Him for that. But sorry to, to wave my flag, but... It's really a fantastic book, and I would love to, to talk about this subject with others because I just feel like it's important, and so many times we don't want to speak about it because it's so taboo and so personal, and so many of us have been on different journeys, but it is part of the human experience to suffer. It's just the way that our planet is. It's, it's a negative planet, but we can make it positive. We can make a change. We can do this. It is possible, and not only possible, but plausible. And this is coming from an optimistic point of view, but I totally believe this. And basically, that's all I have to say about Unstuck. So until next time, live long, prosper. Ciao, tutti.